Chad Collins in the flesh over the computer. <laughs> How's it going, man? Oh, brother, I am so excited to be here. I look at kind of uh, the Venn diagram of my passions. Uh, one, obviously, being sports, financial literacy, and entrepreneurialism. And Thomas, you and I have very similar Venn diagram. So I think this conversation you know, is going to go a lot of cool directions. I love that. There are very few people that fit in the center of all three of those. I'm happy to be included in the group with you. Um, you absolutely are. And super excited, everyone. Uh, for those of you that have jumped on, kind of same housekeeping items as usual. If you have a question, please drop it in the Q&A. Jed are going to probably spend the first, you know, 15, 25 minutes or so, just kind of going through some conversational stuff. If you have any questions as we're getting into it or going through it, drop them in. We'll we'll leave them for for the end to to kind of shoot them off at him, uh, machine gun style. But uh, Jed, for for those of you that don't know, former student athlete, NFL player. You were just talking before the call started. I didn't even know until I looked at your Wikipedia page. You play for the 2025 Super Bowl champs. B, the the prize. Lions. <laughs> the Detroit Lions. <laughs> and I do love that Wikipedia, man. That's yeah, uh, <laughs> that is a good go-to, solid go-to. I would recommend any students coming on here. The two things you should check out when you before you go sit down with somebody you don't know, LinkedIn and Wikipedia. Dude, it makes it a whole lot easier. And I'm just gonna rip through the other kind of things I, I learned about you. Obviously, you know, over our time, we we got connected with Jed. He's the president of the Cougar Collective, which is the the collective that supports Washington State student athletes, where where he played football. Um, and Jed, I know that you've had an incredible impact on this space, working with thousands of athletes across from high school to the pros. I know you're you know working and educating, you know the vast majority of the NFL rookie class that's coming in soon to be the MLB um, athletes over in, in the baseball side. And I would say you are, you know, one of the, the true finance education influencers specifically focused on athletes. Um, and for those of you, again, that like we normally do this, we'll, we'll send over, you know, Jen has a bunch of materials. Um, he was kind enough to share some of those with us. We'll, we'll share them out with the group after the fact, Highly recommend you give them a follow on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on all the socials, um, because, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of what you're putting out in this space, I think, is incredibly beneficial to a lot of the folks within this audience that are coming from the university and collective side, just to get a sense for how athletes are starting to think about how to manage their finances and some of the tools and, you know, tricks and different types of ways that they can more effectively do that. It's becoming a bigger and bigger issue by the day. This you know, recent basketball transfer portal, if it's any indication, there's only going to be more and more money that's making its way to, yeah. to student athletes. But yeah, cannot thank you enough for for taking the time. And, and I'll just kind of quickly start with how did you get involved in NIL and in particular with the Cougs? How did that all come yeah. to be? Uh, well, one, it, it is a, a culmination of my passions, like I mentioned on the onset, and truly this this feels like a big new problem, but in many elements, it's a new chapter to the same story. Professional athletes have been going through this wave and this kind of epiphany of the lack of financial education for decades. Um, my journey here began 15 years ago when I personally walked into the NFL and got my first paychecks. Now, I love to say my first decision with my money was a great investment, but a very poor financial habit. Um, and it really woke me up. I took my first real game check from the league uh, playing with the Cleveland Browns and I bought an engagement ring. And while people love that story and it's very cute and 15 years <laughs> yeah. later, she's she's still around. So that's a good that's thing. That's a great investment, dude. <laughs> that's why it's the best investment. But the idea of making my money and spending my money alerted me to how little I understood this language of money, despite being an accounting major and having a business degree. So I'm a big journaler. One thing we're going to talk about is journaling. You'll see I am never very far from some pen and paper. Um but I wrote in 2008 that I wanted to come back and teach me, theoretically, the rookie class, because well, I was a rookie in 2008, this language of money. So it's been a 15-year journey for me to kind of get here, become that subject matter expert, and really identify myself in a lane of working with athletes and money. 
how NIL burst on the scene a few years ago, I actually started getting calls from college athletic departments, one of the biggest being LSU, and saying, Jed, we want you to come in and teach our students about money. To which I said, this is amazing, but why? Like, what what is changing? And they said, hey, very quickly, we're going to be starting to pay these athletes and we want to prepare them and have them have a financial plan in place, to which just absolutely blew my mind. I was very grateful to be at the kind of forefront of this national move. I really think, you know, what we thought NIL was going to be has pivoted, evolved and changed weekly, if not monthly. And what I really took away from that is, A, this subject I've made my life passion, empowering students to handle these paychecks. I don't help people make money. I don't manage their money. I teach and educate how to handle your money on your own. Great biblical reference. You don't give a person a fish, you teach them to fish. And when I really saw this NIL movement coming, I looked at who was near and dear to my heart. You see one of the other helmets up there being a coog. I brought it back to Washington State and I said, guys, I don't I don't know where we are on this. I know we're not going to be at that top tier or maybe even second tier competitively financially in this element, but we got to do something. And being at the forefront, I said, hey, we got to jump out ahead of it. And actually, in the first year of NIL, I didn't vote this, but we had one of the greatest returns on investment in one of our first athletes that we got to work on. So we did get to jump into the water. We jumped into the deep end quickly, have learned a thousand and one things since. And now I sit and look at every college athlete and soon to be every high school athlete who wants to not just be a business person, but to make themselves a business. They're going to have to identify these fundamentals of personal finance and really the fundamentals of success. And that's fortunately what I get to do. No, dude, it, it's incredible. And what you all have built there is very exciting. Uh, I think you're you're helping out that group of athletes more than a lot of the folks that we get to work with. And it's been exciting to see. And I want to just, I know the athletes at Washington State get some of that education and exposure that a lot of folks, you know, a lot of the folks that we work with and you know, work with 60, 70 collectives across the country, it's not you know, built into the board, um, if you will. How have you guys, and I, I'm asking this as kind of a leading question because I know the impact of it on the other side, but as you've started to to weave a lot of that financial education into as you're passing deals to athletes and as you're making payments to them, like how has that affected the athletes to have not only the cash, but also a game plan for how to use that cash and, and manage their cash more effectively. I mean, it's everything. It's the idea that you are being handed an amazing opportunity, one that no athlete in history at that age has ever gotten a chance to capture. And as I mentioned, because I work with a lot of professional athletes, just because you are living the dream does not mean you have captured the dream. And so one of the first declarations that I really try to get students, student athletes, and professional athletes to understand is this difference between rich and wealth and identifying. And Thomas, I'm going to flip it to you. If you were to give me a definition between rich and wealth, what would the difference for you be? Great question. My definition of rich would be probably having cash flow available. Um, wealth to me is like in a state like you have your balance sheet is much deeper than just the cash um and cash yeah. equivalence line it's you know you are diversified have investments that you know one thing isn't going to topple you like it would take a you know a really bad couple of years for for the wealth to disappear where cash you can i don't know put it into bitcoin or put it into yeah. you know something and it's it's gone but I don't know. How do I do? <laughs> That's well, it's excellent because you brought up the key element there. You said a couple of years to really take wealth away. Our definition of rich is you have money today. Every NFL player, a lot of these NIL athletes are rich in the moment. They're rich today. As you said, they have cash flow today. Wealthy is how many tomorrows you don't have to worry about money. And when that wealth turns into a year, three, five, 10 years, that's when you really see the shift. And so as a 20-year-old NIL athlete, I just got paid 100000 
$50,000 or $5,000, I really have to start to earmark, how do I want my money to work for me? And this is a mindset shift that we really work with a lot of students to develop. I like to call it the three types of ors. Are you a spendor, a savor, or an investor? No, if any English majors are out there, all three of those do not end in <laughs> O-R, but it is a better marketing ploy. So we all are born into that spendor mindset. Some of us start to see the future three, six months, or even a year ahead and start to save. But it's not until we enter that investor, that third mindset, where we're not just saving and protecting money, we're actually putting money at risk. And that risk is allowing us to make that money go to work for us. So it's really identifying some of our natural, some of our kind of um, parental and some of our circumstantial connections and narratives to money. And then being able to ask ourselves, well, what do we ultimately want? If I'm a if I'm an athlete today, I want to win a championship on the field, on the court, in my sport. Well, what does winning look like with money? Yeah, it may mean I get a new pair of sneakers, but what does it mean in three years or 10 years? Can I look at my college atmosphere and experience and say, I just got to set up my entire decade of my 20s, possibly even some of my 30s, and take this jump start in this platform that the game gave me and use it? And so something I always you... tell you. Sorry, ahead. no. I was just going to ask, how are you resonating with, like, how, I don't know, when I was a 19-year-old kid, like, I didn't have any money, but if you gave me no. some, like, I just spent. don't know that I would have had the bandwidth to even appreciate, you know, oh, if I would have put that into a money market account or a, yeah. you know, Apple, you know, or yeah. Amazon, even better, like, that it would have meant anything to me, like, 10 years ago. I'm, I'm so far away from that, and I would imagine with a lot of these athletes, these young you know, men and women, it's tough for them to like, what are the ways in which you are helping to kind of break down those barriers for athletes to, to really kind of resonate with them on stepping outside of just the immediate? Yeah. Well, it is playing into what athletes do best. We are habitual beings by nature. I got to work and play with Drew Brees for four years. And if that guy is anything, he is a habit. He is a process oriented human being. He actually was the first one to introduce me to uh, the atomic habits and the power of habits sure. and really fundamentally what a, a habit is meant to do. And so what I get to connect with athletes is I want to show them, yes, you are going to get to enjoy today. You are young. You have a great opportunity. Do not let that pass you by. Have some fun. But what we want to do is be able to give them the boxes to check, the habits to form, and really the sequence of events that allows them to look at the next paycheck and the next 10 paychecks and confirm that they're both enjoying today as well as setting up for tomorrow. Sure. So this is why we really believe in that concept of employing your paycheck, make your money go to work for you, meaning that first person you got to worry about is your future. Then you get to you know be introduced to taxes, which I will talk about here in a moment. Yeah, you, we've got a whole list of technical ones we want to get with, to you. Yeah, <laughs> you get to handle some of your your subscriptions and your debts and your bills and your rent, and then you really get to identify. As long as my plan is taking care of these things, I get to enjoy today. It's no different than looking at, you know, setting up for a season. If I go through training camp and I make sure my conditioning's in order, I know my playbook and I have set sure. these things up for success, come game time, I get to have fun because I know I have a plan and have prepared myself to do that. So it's really getting those connections. How can I build stories? How can we tell them analogies to allow all the great skills that they already have translate into the world of money? And that is another pillar that I love to talk to student athletes in particular about is you are going to be successful in anything you do in life if you take the habits you have for your game and translate them to the next thing. That transition is a massive void and a massive gap for a lot of athletes, sure. but it's really building on those habits. I love it. And I would say for those of you that are out there and, and for anyone that's going to listen to this thing, you know, when we post it out. Jed, more than anyone that we've seen, has a way to connect with the athletes. And, and we see it actually translating into the real financial you know, side of things with our product. We can get a sense for how athletes are are spending and saving and obviously the inflows and outflows. And yeah, I mean, Jed, to your credit, 
Um, I will. I, 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 I don't know how you're doing it, but you're I love that comment, exactly. and it's. I, I got to just deliver to, again, with the NFL Players Association, uh, a room full of 100 players. And I come off the stage and some of the people come up to me and say, man, these guys, they were so locked in. There were yeah. four other speakers. Why were they so paying? I say, well, well, number one, I'm a former. So I get sure. that instant credibility and validation. But number two, it's the greatest skill I have developed is, you know, stirs from my sister. My sister has special needs. My sister has always been somebody I've had to consciously communicate with, asking questions, leading her and guiding her. And that connection is what I get to do when I go into a, 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 a room, a room full of a team of 10 or a team of 100. I get to look at it and I say, this isn't about Jed. I'm no smarter than anyone in here. I'm a fullback for crying out loud. <laughs> but what I'm here to do is teach you the one step that I have taken and really focusing on we're not here to overwhelm or intimidate or impress you. I'm here to make sure you walk out with one thing. And it's really that focus that allows that connectivity. Um, yeah. And it's been something, hey, if anybody wants to become a better speaker, go get reps. I've done, you know, a thousand <laughs> sessions. Well, I mean, a credit to you, Ben, because it's it's providing really meaningful results to to change lives. Um, you know, athletes, and when we were first starting, it was a lot of money in and money out. And we're actually starting yeah. to see, particularly the the folks that you've had a chance to work with, a true kind of step function change in the way that they're thinking about their financial lives. And it's yeah, really, really encouraging. And you're you're setting them up for the next day. They are years. the the um, next wave of wealth is these NIL athletes. And you, I, I think you meant to say too, the fact that you were again on the Detroit Lions that has to have something to, to help with to. the credibility point of it too. But um, <laughs> awesome, dude. Really appreciate it. I want to transition to some of the more technical uh, questions that, that we've been getting over the past six, eight months. We'll start with the taxes only because you've got 11 days, athletes. Uh, if, yeah. uh, if you haven't done it already. Knock, knock, um, knock. 1099s, W9s, you know, quarterly tax estimates. Um, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other, you know, a whole host of others, state, regional, not like what is when you're starting out um, on the education side with athletes, how are you helping them to understand kind of the, the tax world that they're stepping into? Again, I use stories and I use analogies, but whenever I talk about taxes. One, I shifted to the term society. So when we look at our money buckets, our cash management system, we help students build. Society choice is that tax choice. Why we talk about society is the first thing students need to realize is we are a part of the American society. We get things that we take for granted every day provided to us by these tax dollars. Does anybody love paying taxes? No. Should you pay $1 more than you owe? Absolutely not. But looking at the positive things that these taxes go towards allows us to look at the contribution to our society. So that's typically where I love to start. And I always love to look in a room and say, what positive things are going in these dollars? But then I get to use a few kind of analogies to explain the concepts. Everybody helps with Turkey Day, uh, Turkey or Thanksgiving. And everybody says, OK, well, if I have a, a family of 20, you know, we're having Thanksgiving at our house. I have to go buy a 20 pound turkey, you know, pound for each person. As we look at it, though, 20 pounds never ends up on the table. 20 pounds is not what you are going to eat. You went and bought a 20 pound turkey, but maybe 12 or 13 pounds are actually the meat. You got to remove the, the bones and the giblets and the goblets. I know some people in, in California remove the skin. Well, some people in Louisiana just throw the whole thing in a deep fryer. So <laughs> everybody gets to choose their own thing. But as you look at that concept, what I went and bought a 20 pound turkey, I only get to eat 12 pounds. The gross income is what you make. And you need to look at your gross income of 50,000 or $100,000 and identify this is what I thought I make. Your net income is what you take, what actually of that turkey is going to end up on the table. And so we really need to begin that sequence of what comes between my gross income and my net income. The first and the greatest expense you're going to pay throughout your life is your federal income tax uh, brackets. Where this comes is, I love using this again, food, easy analogies. 
uh, an hey, we've been talking about food all day long, please. All day long. And it's this is why I love doing it with taxes because it gives you kind of a silly, fun connectivity. And if I am personally like in person, I sometimes bring ice cream because it plays <laughs> into the, the tax brackets. But as you look at your progressive income tax code, what that means is each dollar you make is going to be put into a different bracket. I can use an example around a, a restaurant. When you walk into a restaurant, you have you know your your hostess making ten dollars an hour, your waiter making twenty dollars an hour, the manager or the cooks making thirty dollars an hour, and you start to see the different levels of payment that you have to pay each of these. Your paychecks are no different. The first paycheck of the month is or of the year is going to be your hostess, that ten dollar. Then you're going to go into the waiter, that twenty dollar. It's going to be a little bit higher. As you add paychecks, you start to pay higher and higher a dollar amounts. And so what our question then is, if federal income tax is going to be our biggest expense, how do we take some of our managers, the highest paid employees, our paychecks at the end of the line, and remove them? And that's when we get into the conversation around deductions and credits. But the biggest thing I like to, and we'll circle back to some deductions here as we are becoming business people you have a business, you have some deductions. The The biggest caveat I, I like to point out to athletes is we pay this thing called federal income tax. We pay state by state income tax. And then every employee pays something called FICA. And this FICA element is 7.5% to me as the employee and actually 7.5% to my employer. So it totals out to be about 15, 15.3% to be exact. What nobody tells you as an entrepreneur, I started a business, I, I work my own hours, I make my own money. Nobody tells you on top of federal and on top of state income, you have to pay the employee and the employer side of that FICA self-employment tax. And so when you look at how many dollars you're making as income before you even get into federal and state, 15% is going to go straight into this FICA self-employment. And so we have to begin to see these dollars, these paychecks, and say, how can I build a habit and start to earmark a certain set of my paycheck towards this society choice and even having an account that automatically does that for me? You talked about the athletes as businesses. Um, another question that we get all the time is, should I be a LLC? Should I be an S corp? Should I be a, Love you it. know, just the run of the mill 1099 contract employee? Uh, you spent a, a decent amount of time helping to kind of demystify some of those decisions for athletes. Can you walk us through, you know, if you are an athlete stepping into this space, when are the inflection points where you need to start thinking about, am I an individual or am I a business? So I look at the LLC decision and choice today, and I say there's really no reason not to do it. Why we're going to look at an LLC, a limited liability company, we are looking to establish ourselves as a credible business. And the first benefit an LLC gives you is those three letters behind the name of your company. It could be Jedediah Collins LLC. It could be Base Path LLC. It could be whatever you want it to be called. But looking at something differently with that LLC designation with it allows you to step out and say, I get, I'm a college athlete. You see me as a student, but I'm a business. And you can tell because I've created an entity, I created a, a profile that says, I am thinking about this differently than just some one-off deals. So the first and biggest, if you want to step out as an athlete, be confident this is a business for you and you want to tell people proudly, that's going to be why you form that LLC. The and other, it's super market, hard and expensive, right? No, gosh, that is what is so amazing, especially with today with online resources. Setting up an LLC can be as costly as $200, maybe even less depending on what state you're in. But you can say, you know, California is going to be the highest at about $1,000 a year. But two to $500, you can set up an LLC and then just have to annually renew it. The biggest credibility of why people start LLCs is to limit their liability, the personal liability. 
why I don't want to just be Jed Collins doing business and I'm Jed Collins LLC is because I remove the individual liability. I can remove my home, my car, my other income, my assets, all outside of what the business entity is. I'm not saying every athlete's going to go out and say some things and do some things, but you need to get insurance. But the first insurance policy is this LLC. I'm removing my personal assets. A big clarification here is that an LLC is not a tax election. Does it provide you tax benefits? Yes, because you are a business now. You're going to be able to see the business deductions. Caveat here, a traditional employee gets paid, gets taxed, and then gets to go spend money. Why you're setting up a business and why everybody says entrepreneurs and self-employed peoples don't pay taxes, not totally true. Again, gets paid, gets taxed, spend money. A business gets paid, spends money, gets taxed. So right. that is the massive difference in sequence as you do start to set up this company. And as you mentioned, it is simple and it is a flexible entity to set up LLCs. If I'm just going to be a sole uh, member, if I'm going to have some partners, as you look at what you want to do with it, it is very customizable to be as easy or as comprehensive as you want it to be. And as, I mean, going back to the tax piece, that deduction portion of this is actually pretty important. And I I think that's, of all the the blind spots that are out there for athletes, that, that feels like one of the lower hanging fruits that are out there of just understanding, you know, athletes, if you are traveling to somewhere, purchasing something, you know, you have an expense related to the, the work that you're doing for a collective or a brand or whatever, you know, those are things that you can you know, you spend the money and then you pay the taxes. Those are, can be pretty significant, you know, tax Very. benefits to to take advantage of. And so you look at, let's say I made $100,000 of income. I'm going to take my standard deduction. I'm going to contribute to some retirement accounts. Let's take those off the table. But anything you put money into to run your business. I love to show people the haircut. I'm a professional <laughs> speaker. I got to go get a haircut. That is now a business deduction. I have to travel to these events, business deduction. You have to eat on these trips, business deduction. When you are starting up, those LLC costs I was talking about, business deduction. I got to go get a ring light and something to, to set it in, business deduction, because I'm going to create content. I'm, a, I'm an athlete, and these people want to, I can go do therapy and treatment training, all those kinds of things. If I want some education, if it is going towards me earning more money in my business, I get to deduct it as a business expense. And there's another one called qualified business, QBI, that is about 20% of your income. That's a whole nother avenue to talk to a CPA about. But this is why you want that separate LLC with a separate bank account connected to it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, LLC is not going to be your tax election. An LLC is called a pass-through entity, which just means you're getting paid. It passes through the LLC directly to you as an individual. Thomas, you mentioned a lot of students today are saying, well, it's you know $500 to do an LLC. I hear these S-Corps are a really neat idea. What is this S-Corp designation? And everybody says, oh, it's cool. You don't have to pay taxes. Pause. Think about that. That is never going to be the case. Right. People say in an LLC, you can pay no taxes because you deducted all of your income, but then you also don't have any money to live on. So you got to measure how much of a deduction do I want based on how much do I want to live? When I would start to look at an S Corp election, LLC is not your tax election. You are a pass through individual entity. An S Corp is a tax election. What the biggest advantage to an S-Corp is going to be is that they have salary and distributions. So as you look at it, legally, you make a certain amount of money as a business. You have to have a competitive salary for somebody in your position be paid to you. On that income, you're going to have to pay federal, state, and that FICA self-employed tax that we were talking about. But here is the catch to an S-Corp. Let's say I made that $100,000. 
50,000 I paid to myself as a salary, I have to pay the FICA. The other 50,000 comes out as a distribution and it does not have to pay the self-employment tax, the 15% FICA. That is where the S-Corp designation becomes a consideration. If I'm paying $50,000, that's $7,000 of taxes right. in self-employment taxes I can save. When this becomes a true question, I would say just, again, round numbers. This is not advice. This is just education. Around $100,000 of income in my business is when I would sit down and start talking to a CPA about taking that S-Corp election, separating my salary and separating distributions, and seeing if I can save money. Why the 100000 is a good earmark is because it is going to cost more to have an S-Corp both from a CPA sure. perspective as well as setting it up. So if that's a two to three to four thousand dollar investment, that's why you want to have enough income to make that election. There are some other caveats to S Corps and LLCs, but for NIL athletes, that is the biggest one. I have a bigger income. I can separate it into two payments and, and skip out on that self-employment tax. Yeah. And that is saving athletes tens of thousands of dollars in some cases. Um, it can be really, really meaningful if you're you're doing it right. And if you have a good CPA, which I've, I've heard you use this term now a couple of times, a CPA, um, can you tell us what a CPA is? And in the broader context of, I've heard you use this before, and quite frankly, I'm stealing it, the A-team. What, what is the A-team? How does an athlete set up their A-team? So I, I sit down with athletes and I have them write out two lists of names. The first list is who else is on this journey with you that you are going to support? That's going to be mom, dad, brother, sister, niece, nephew. Who else is going to partake in your success? The other list is who else is on this journey with you that's going to help you capture this dream? Again, you're living the dream. You haven't captured it yet. That's how we're going to build a plan to go do so as I look at this A team, that's going to be, and typically, you know, a lot of people first get introduced to their agent. Their agent is the person that's going to help them make money. Then you get introduced to an advisor or an accountant next. Let's go with the advisor first. So I got introduced to an advisor. They don't make me money. They help me manage and invest my money. The third person is that accountant. And my accountant is going to be my compliance coordinator, the person that makes sure all the dollars are coming in, all the dollars are going out. I'm maximizing my deductions and my credits, and I am filing and complying with the tax code. Advisors have cool ideas. Agents have cool ideas. The accountant is going to be the one that makes sure you are up on your taxes and up on your tax code. The fourth person is going to be your attorney. And this is going to be somebody who sets up these legal documents, contracts, even some estate documents to just get better prepared. Maybe I do have some family I want to take care of and build a trust out. Those kinds of elements are with your attorney. And fifth is going to be kind of another form of agent. And that other agent is going to be when I want to go buy a house. I need a real estate agent. So as you look at a business. I am now an NIL athlete. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business comma man. Jay-Z said that. As I well, look at is. who, that's great. Uh, <laughs> and as I look at like where I'm going, my agent is the first one to help me make money. My advisor is going to help me create money. My accountant is going to help me file my taxes and, and, and make sure I'm compliant with my money. My attorney is going to help protect my money. And then the other people are going to help you make decisions around your money. But these elements, this is how you are being introduced. And remember, there's now 15, 16, 13-year-olds who are becoming these business entities, both in sports, also in social media and YouTube. You are being thrust into this professional world immediately. Having a trusted team and trust is massive. When it comes to right. building your team, that is going to be a big one. But everybody's going to need a CPA if they are starting to make money over that $100,000 mark. Under that, you can go on these softwares, these tools, TaxLayer, TaxAct, TurboTax even, and get free or get resources to help file for very cheap.
That trust piece is, I think, really interesting. And I've never heard you talk about the two types of lists. Um, how often does the first list mingle with the second list? Because a lot of athletes, you know, the spectrum of their upbringing and where they're coming from and the networks that they have surrounding them is incredibly wide. There are a lot of very successful athletes where that first list ends up kind of becoming part of the second list. Um, how do you help athletes kind of manage? Because, because the trust is so tied in, like I trust my uncle, I trust my dad, I trust my, my cousin, I trust my best friend. I trust, you know, and so, yeah, if trust is going to be the most important you know, piece to finding an agent or advisor or you know, manager, I know that doesn't fit into the A, A squad, but, you know, mm. where and how do you help athletes understand, you know, do you put a hard line in between those two? How do you try to manage those different categories of, of folks? Because they're both incredibly important and trust being a part of both of those is something that is going to play a role. No, I, so w one of the reasons we write those two lists is I ask them or I kind of alert them to the two biggest hurdles for you achieving your dream are often going to be these two lists. Everybody points to athletes and goes, ah, oh, they bought a car and they bought jewelry and they've been, athletes are not going broke anymore doing those things. We're becoming too educated and we're seeing the, the long-term impacts of our financial choices. The first list, the ones of your family, are often where athletes are going broke today, trying to support too many, trying to provide. Everybody says, you made it, we made it. So why I want them to write down that list is to really identify who you are willing to support, share, and be a part of, and who you need to start saying no to. I don't put a hard wall in between the family atmosphere and the A-team atmosphere, I do give a good call out. And from a financial perspective, I'm a certified financial planner. I always introduce players to the word fiduciary. Fiduciary is a advisor designation that uh, confirms and assures that person is going to put your best interest first. I have a, a story about you know going to a, a restaurant and ordering from a waiter. Having the food on the menu makes it uh, agreeable or makes it uh, reasonable for it to be ordered as dinner. Having something be in your best interest is different than just being on the menu. And that's what a fiduciary is held to a different standard. It's not a suitability thing. It's your best interest. And so where you do start to see that pullover of uncle, cousin, somebody I knew from childhood is going to be on my A-team, that's where you really need to be able to set up the conversation where the athlete is now being educated of, that's fine if they're playing that role, but you have to ask them questions and hold them to the same standard as if it was some random person that you didn't know and trust and that yeah. position. Um, we could go on for hours asking oh, about that's... every technical question under the book. I want to leave some time for for some of the, the questions that have come in through the Q&A. Um, All right. We'll, we'll start with the first one. Best practices for incoming high school athletes transitioning from high school to to college. What are some of the things that you're you're putting in front of those athletes as they're making that transition? So my best practice is again, this is what Money Vehicle does is we we set up a cash management tool and system. So the first thing is going to be having them identify society, past, present, future, and your compassion choice. We didn't talk too much about that compassion choice, but that's not just the philanthropic endeavor, which we are seeing a lot of NIL athletes favor that philanthropic impact, but that's also my sister's birthday and Christmas and wanting to go and help a, a you know local food drive. All of those things are in that compassion choice. And so what I ask athletes to do as they start getting their first paycheck is earmark them again, employ their paycheck. About 25% is going to go to society. So that's a quarter right out the gate. Your past choices is going to be about 30%. That's your rent. That's your debt. That's your bills. Then you look at your day-to-day -day living. That's going to be another 30% or so as you identify how you want to spend on a day-to-day -day basis. 
past, present, we get to the future bucket. And that future bucket is going to be saving and investing. And we identify saving is protecting, investing is putting money at risk. So really knowing where you are there. I love athletes today. I love young students today who are really emphasizing, I want to invest in future me. My famous and a great financial literacy quote, I made a dollar, I saved a dime. I made a dollar, I saved a dime. If you made a dollar, that means 10 cents is going. If you made $100,000, that means $10,000 is going to that future choice. Last is that compassion choice. And I only ask to start with a penny, 1% of this bucket going to something or someone outside of yourself. So as I work with a college okay. athlete walking in, doesn't matter if it's 10,000, 100,000, or as I work with professional athletes, a million dollars. I can place every one of their dollars into one of those five buckets and allowing them to see the percentages and allowing them to understand I control this. I want to put 15%, not 10% into my future. Great. You got to pull it from one yeah. of the other buckets. Which bucket are you going to pull it from? And then sitting them down and seeing what accounts do you need? You need an individual checking account and you need an LLC checking account. You need a savings account, possibly two savings accounts. And those are financial institutions. The other piece is, and we haven't talked anything about this, is why you need ours, credit. Every one of your student athletes must go get a credit card today. That is the polar opposite advice you've heard for 30 years. But if you want your financial reputation to start being more of a positive advantage in your life, you got to start playing the credit game. So educating them and empowering them to not just get the credit card, but to build the habits to connect them to their bank accounts and make sure that they're paid off and used wisely is going to be a massive impact. The other two uh, accounts that we help them set up is going to be a brokerage account, not necessarily to invest, but to be able to control bigger paychecks. I don't have NFL players deposit their paycheck into a checking account. They deposit it into a brokerage account and then put their lifestyle into that bank. And the last one, really where this mission for me started 15 years ago, is how do we have every one of your NIL athletes create a Roth IRA? Not enough time to go through the benefits of that, but those are the five accounts and the five money buckets that we really try to emphasize a student get their plan set up with. I read a book way back when called The Slight Edge, and it showed there was oh. in it a, a graph that showed if you max out a, a Roth starting at 18 versus starting, I think, at like 24, there was a multi million dollar difference when yep. you get to age like 55. Um, and you know, even you just said, like those three or four years difference between when you're starting that is millions of dollars in in terms of implication you said earlier how are you getting student athletes today to buy into this process to really it's through this education it's through this knowledge if you asked a thousand americans how comfortable and confident are you with your money you're going to get a very poor percentage of people who say oh i'm going to be able to retire and i live comfortably uh and i'm you as an NIL athlete have the greatest opportunity and advantage of any investor in the world. And that's the idea of time. And Thomas, you just hit on it. Four years is a massive difference. 10 years is a game changer. And so if you can get them to start today, 10% of every paycheck goes into a Roth IRA. They're going to be set up for not just a really fun time in their college years, but the rest of their life. Right. Uh, that leads right into the next one. And this is coming from a collective. Jed, do you do education specifically for collectives? And if so, how do we engage with you? I absolutely do. I, again, look at my passions of athletes, public speaking, financial literacy. This is what I love to do. Um, I work with very closely with a few athletic departments, collectives. I love working with them because they are helping create yeah an income stream for these athletes. I want to help them manage it. They're um, ground so zero for they are. money to athletes. And I've worked with some athletes. How can I be a part of setting up these systems? This is, you are part of our NIL collective. I'm, you know, with whichever group, here is how we're going to set you up. We're going to make sure and confirm you have these accounts and we're going to help you set your percentages and automatically direct those dollars. So, 
I love yeah. working in person. I would come to a campus and deliver to a team and to an athletic department or a group of students. Um, so yes, my my yeah. website is yourmoneyvehicle.com. Reach out, Jed at yourmoneyvehicle.com. dot um, Would love to talk about how I can help. And and allow me to brag on you for a moment too. I mean, Jed offers, at least for collectives, far more than just the education for the athletes. He's the president of a collective that is, yeah, doing some really exciting things within this space. Um, you for know, being the what, little guys, a lot of people are copying what we're doing. I know. Well, you said early on, like I don't even know if we're going to be a tier one or tier two. I mean the the types of of traction and and success that you all have had rivals you know some of the best ones out there so yeah even if you're just looking to talk to to jet about you know what are the things that they've been able to do and execute from a collective management perspective but certainly i would say you know again we've seen the results in real time through you know just understanding how the athletes finances look through our wallet app and some of the other tools that we provided to the athletes like there is a a meaningful difference between what a lot of these Washington state athletes are, are doing with their money versus some of the others that are out there. So highly encourage you know anyone who's out there, who's thinking about how to get some of these. And, and I know this is something that it's, it's not in the Q and a, but I hear all the time from our collective partners is, and really it's, it's more the collective donors who are saying, okay, if I'm going to cut you a seven figure check to pay out to athletes, what are you doing to protect your that? plan? that money for those athletes. And if the collective doesn't have a great answer, it's typically come back to me when you do. Um, yeah. So, you know, I would say Jed is the front lines of having the the right response to to those kind of questions that are coming from, you know, the, the donors and certainly the folks that are trying to put their athletes in the best position to succeed in life, uh, not and just in the next four years. The only addition I would put into that is I am not an advisor. I am not affiliated with a financial institution. Right. I'm never going to ask the athlete to put their money in something for me or sell them anything. I'm an educator, and that's really what I love and what I am most proud of with the professional athletes. Why they trust me and why these associations are bringing me in is because I'm just there to do that. I'm not looking for clients. I only work with students. Uh, last question that we've got. Where do you see the crossover happening between content creator economy and pay for play NIL? I don't really know what that exactly means, but hopefully it means something to you. <laughs> so I look at it as what we originally thought NIL was going to be is uh, Olivia, you know, down at LSU. She sure. has a tremendous following and it's content creator. I want to pay you to be the face of my product because of your following. Sure. We quickly saw it shift to more of this. No, you're the the left tackle of my football team. I don't really care if you have any social media following. You're the DB, gonna, dude. You, you want to yeah, be the you, DB, trust me. Yeah, <laughs> you, you're the guy. Um, I look at it going forward, and I think, honestly, the pay for play is going to level out. And we're going to see a cap on that. I mean, every college athletic department has had to create a salary cap in the last three years. I don't know if most people are aware of that, but it's a reality. Uh, you know, my my right guard is going to get paid X percent of however much we have. This is just the truth of what we're seeing. I look at the investment dollars on the return on investment. I do see a cap on how much schools are going to be able to afford to just pile in of you play the position I need. The upside and the kind of limitless nature here is building your brand, having the confidence to say, I'm Jedediah Collins. I want you to know me as Jed the football guy, but Jed the finance guy. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm the fullback of finance. So where you look at this kind of creator economy, this YouTube phenomenon that's been going on for 20 years, this is where the creative athletes, I got to talk to a division three player about a week or two ago, Jack Betts, who is crushing it. And he's yeah. like, dude, no, I'm, 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 I'm D3. Like nobody knows why he's a hustler. He's authentic to his brand and his nature. And he understands his message that he wants to be connected to. And beyond his playing days, he will have avenues open up. 
why I start with athletes in this be a pro mindset. One of the workshops I get to deliver confidence, trust, and value. The first part is confidence. What do you want to be known as? What is your identity and your brand? So I look at that creator mindset, the journaler, the one who has a message. How can you package it? How can you frame it? And then how can it lead you to that transition to a career beyond your game? Uh, I'm really excited about this modern day athlete. I think the Golden State Warriors changed the game. The fact that a few of them are going to become billionaires, it really awakened the athlete culture to make a lot of money on in the game, be rich from your game, build wealth beyond the game. And uh, we're going to see it happen here. You know, Michael Jordan did it first, but right. there's a whole lot of others coming after him. I love it, Ben. Thank you so much for, for hey, taking the time. Thank and you. And sharing what is, you know, incredibly valuable advice. And um, if those of you haven't had the chance to to connect with Jed, to get him involved with your athletes, um, cannot recommend it highly enough. We've seen the results in real time. And if you couldn't tell from the passion that's coming out of the, the call, you know, he's all in on trying to help to support athletes. And I love what you said. You're an educator. You know, you're not trying to, to – advise or manage the money you really are here to help the athletes through this journey for their you know their own livelihood and, and their own friends and family and it's thomas it's you really know the, see, so jump out and be an entrepreneur it was a lot easier path to just have people hand you their money and go manage it that's a much easier yeah, income I'll and do. it's a great career it's a great career yeah. but no i chose uh yeah i chose a unique one and it just so happens over the last six years as i've been down this path that Every college athletic department and every high school in America is needing the same thing, and that's financial literacy. So yeah. I love what you do. I love what the the business you have built and the success that you guys are having because you're doing it the right way. And I, I think uh, we're going to have a lot of collaboration and crossover in the future. So thank you for the opportunity. We really appreciate it, man. As always, we'll send out you know everything that Jed talked about here today. We've got a couple of slides that, that we'll send to you as well that kind of dive into – more of the technical uh, stuff that we covered today. We'll have links for, for how to connect with Jed. And um, I suspect that some of you guys will be using those soon, but really appreciate it as always, dude. Thanks so much for joining everyone else. Really appreciate you being a part of this. Thanks for the questions. And we'll, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Enjoy the day.